but I could ride at the school. It would save my foster dad time in the mornings. One day I could maybe ride in a competition if I practice a lot. I'm sorry, I thought it was a planning hour. Uh, it comes in different colors with color match rims. I know I'll never get one, but if I could have one impossible wish, it would be for Redline D600. All right, thank you, Ricky, for going first. That was very brave, very brave. And I really appreciate you sharing from your heart like that. Oh, okay, all right. Those of you that are up next week, be preparing for your speeches, okay? Step off, Joey. This isn't about you. Give me my pencils. Please. Please. Isn't Lucas polite? I've got extra you can have. Hi. Hi. Excuse me. Who was that guy? In our business. Fancy bike. Man, if I was a foster kid like Ricky Sanchez, I would wish for parents. He's got the Martinos. They're not his real parents. They're not gonna buy him that bike. They got a bunch of their own kids. Well. He was probably just too embarrassed to wish for real parents in front of the whole class. Parents are way more impossible than a bite. I guess. What are you going to wish for? I'm going to wish that Ricky Sanchez gets that bike. You can wish on the old Granville house for him. The old Granville house? My mom calls it that. It's from some old movie she makes us watch every year. You make a wish and throw a rock at the house. If you break some glass, your wish comes true. I don't know. My mom, yeah, she just calls it an eyesore. Just look for a rock to throw. Lucas, stop. We're gonna get in trouble. Come on, Olivia. It's two wishes in one. Yours and Ricky's. Go on, shout the wish. Lucas, only if you don't throw the rock. Might not work then. I wish that Ricky Sanchez got a Redline D600 mountain bike for Christmas. Lucas. Sorry. I had to at least throw it. Gotta go. See you at the shop tomorrow. Yeah, see ya. Together, baby? I guess. You guess? What do you mean you guess? I got the popcorn TVs on. Let's go. Mom, have you ever seen anybody in that house next door? No, uh, no one's ever lived there since we've been here. Yeah, well, somebody left a light on. There's no power over there. It's empty. Uh, I wonder if some kids got in there, man. I wish the owner would take care of that house. It wouldn't invite so much trouble. That's not a house light or TV. There's just no flicker. No, it's not a ghost if that's what you're thinking, baby. Lucas thinks it's a wishing house, but you have to break some glass to get your wish. Uh, yeah, well, Lucas is good at breaking things. Mm -hmm. Mom? Mm. If you could wish for anything, what would you wish for? Well, I would wish that we would beat Alabama this year and that my daughter would finish her report so we can watch them do so. Let's go. Mm. Come on, baby. So out of anything in the world, that's what you'd wish for? Out, out of being rich or famous or married? <sighs> Olivia, sweetheart, it's all right to make 
wishes and say prayers as long as it doesn't make us unhappy with the life that we're living. We can't always have what we want. We can't always have what we wish for, but we can be content with what we have. Are you content with what you have? Ugh, would you get it done? Got a football game to watch. Mm -hmm. Now we do have samples of all the cakes so you can taste the flavors. There's so many choices. Dad, isn't that Steve Dahl from the newspaper? <gasps> Ooh, buy you bingo beignets. He can talk about the smells coming in and loving them. Mm, you hurt my mind. I just want it to be perfect. I know. Well, why don't you try some and see what you think? Okay. All right. Chocolate marshmallow caramel. Fairly mm. different. Got your classic white, you got red velvet, little strawberry white, a peanut butter chocolate, that's it. I don't know what everyone would like that. Well, don't overthink it. What matters is that it feels good and it tastes good. <laughs> After all, in 20 years, all that matters is you and your groom and the commitment you made to each other, right? <laughs> Were you cool as a cucumber on your wedding day? Uh, well, I'm not married. So this one was a custom made. They had asked for, yeah. Olivia! Focus! Your daddy was trying to make a good impression on that reporter. Sorry, Mom, do you know where Olivia is? In the back, helping. Red line, D600. He got it. Who gave it to him? Anonymous gift? Mrs. Bell? Maybe that's why she's having this right the Come on, Mrs. Bell's a teacher. She could never afford that bike. Don't you get it? It was our wish. Awesome bike, Ricky. I can't believe it, can you? Of course we believed it. We wished in the old grandma house for you, and it came true. What's that? The house next to Olivia's. I thought that place was haunted. There was a glow in the house last night. I saw something. Not, not a ghost, more like an angel. Well, seriously. I want to show my bike to everyone. I don't think we should mention to anybody else about the house, all right? They'll think we're crazy. They'll believe us. You really think Ringy's not going to say anything? Ah! I wish for a girlfriend. I wish for a girlfriend. I wish for a pony. I wish for a new NBA basketball. My impossible Christmas wish is for my grandma to spend Christmas with us this year. She has to have a nurse travel with her, but buying two tickets is expensive, so I guess grandma can't come home. Missy Burke wants her grandma to visit. Jenny Pritchard wants an allergy free dog. I wish that Carly Johnson could take ballet. I wish that Johnny Bell could fly like a bird. I wish that Adam Mickens could get a new truck for his dad. Well, the whole thing is a fat lie, because I went and I wished for a million dollars. And look at me. Now I'm still riding the bus to school. Oh my goodness, a quiet little neighborhood is turning into quite the circus. I'm sorry, Mom. <sighs> sorry about what, sweetie? It's not your fault, is it? Well, Ricky Sanchez got that bike and Jenny got the dog, so I kind of told some people. You told them what? Oh, that that old house grants wishes? Well, yeah. You just shot up your wish and the angel hears you. Sweetheart. All right, there's no angel. That's just some old house owned by some crotchety old landlord. Doesn't take care of it. I'm sure it was pretty romantic and beautiful in its day, but just, it's just an empty old house now. I 
I saw something. Yeah? Well, maybe you did. And it's just a big coincidence about the bike and the dog, Mom? You know, honey, I, I really don't know how to explain all that, but I gotta be honest, I think you, uh, I think you have the wrong idea about angels. They're not genies that just grant wishes. They're, uh, they're messengers. In the Bible, whenever God's about to do something special, something out of the ordinary, the angels come and tell people not to be afraid. Like the Christmas story when, when the angel came to Mary? Yeah, exactly. But what if, Mom? What if what, honey? What if God is about to do something really, really special? That's a good question, sweetie. Hello? Someone there? You vandalize this house and I will call the police. What are you doing here, child? You come here to rob me, break my windows? No, ma'am. Well, what are you doing out here in the middle of the night? I thought you were an angel. An angel? Do I look like an angel to you? Maybe a little. Are you the reason these children have been coming around here throwing these rocks? N not entirely on purpose. I came here to have privacy. Please don't get me in trouble. Please don't tell that man that was here either. He knows my teacher. Then you be on your way out of here. She's scaring an old soul. Go on, get. And she grabbed me on my shoulder and I freaked out. She was all covered in these white scars. So, she's not an angel? No, I don't think so. Although, she did call herself an old soul instead of an old lady. Why would a mean old lady give a bike to Ricky? You know, all angels in the Bible are always playing harps. Some of them have swords made of fire. I mean, it doesn't matter if she's an angel or not, right? Why are you so bummed about it? Well, some of us still have impossible Christmas wishes. That's all. Skip with me. Are you the owner of this house? Yes, I am. It's a shame it's in such disrepair. You have to make it look like a crime scene, too? People are vandalizing my property. This is the first you've noticed? Wow. Uh, why don't you sell it? Someone who'll take care of it, make it beautiful again like it used to be, I'm sure. Yes, it was, but what I do with it is my business. You're right. Well, make sure you don't forget that chalked body outline there. Keep people away that way for sure. Do you have a better suggestion? You know, I. <laughs> 
I don't think I don't think that anybody meant to cause you any trouble. Really, it's just kids that are excited about Christmas. You know, kids. <laughs> I don't have any kids. Well, um, maybe we can uh, find a better way to keep people out and get your message across without all the, the bah humbug. If you uh, can come up with an idea that works, then I'm all for it. Deal, you got it. Yeah. What was your name? My name is uh, Melinda Mead. I live next door. I'm Dr. Nathan Davis. Dr. Nathan Davis. All right, I'll be sure to remember that. Just, just call me Nathan. I'm, I'm used to saying the doctor part. Right. We'll see if we can come up with a friendlier sign, friendlier keep out sign. You take care. Yeah. All right. Let's continue with our oral report, shall we? You know, I have to say, I have really enjoyed what you guys have been sharing. I hope you've learned a lot about each other. Olivia, you ready? My impossible Christmas wish is for a husband for my mom, Melinda Mead. She's not impossible to marry off or anything. <laughs> She's just really busy taking care of me all the time. She works really hard at King Cakes and then comes home and has to do all the work at home. It makes her pretty tired for anything else. Plus, she's getting kind of old, so most men at her age are already married. <laughs> the perfect husband for my mom would support her dream of going back to school for hospitality management. He would have to love kids, like me, and he'd have to have a good job and a good sense of humor. But most importantly, he'd have to put up with my mom's love of college football and her beloved LSU Tigers. <laughs> The truth is, I think my mom is really special. But I think she hear it better from somebody who's not hoping for more allowance. So, that's my impossible Christmas wish. First, Mom. Me? You want me to go first? I'm gonna wish a healthy baby for Daphne. Wish that I stopped craving everything. <laughs> Mr. Conroy, you should wish about that article in the paper about the beignets. That's a good Maybe one. Yeah, I will. Yeah, that's a good yeah. wish. Some more All right. Uh, how you doing? Hi. Good. Um, what do you think? It's a lot better than that yellow caution tape, don't you think? Yeah, it's much better. All right. Yeah. And I hope you don't mind about the lights. Um, we saw that the power was still connected, so we... It looks really nice. Good, it's good. Really... And, and here's a, a special place for people to put their wishes. They still have the joy of making their wishes without all the insurance claims for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, why don't you, you, you make the first wish? Uh, no, I, I don't have any wishes. I... I bet you're wishing for a delicious home-cooked meal, aren't you? Jeb Conroy. Hey, Nathan. My wife, Daphne. Pleasure. We see you eating at the deli downtown every night. Uh-oh. Yeah, but boy, it's close by my <laughs> office, so... Well, I mean, uh, I mean, they're nice in there, but the food is okay at best. Now, you come into King Cakes, we're gonna cook you an amazing meal. Chicken and sausage gumbo, and a bread mm -hmm. bowl. Yeah, we're having a big pot of jambalaya tonight that, uh, uh, well, uh, you should come and join us. Right? Tonight? No, no, yeah. I, I don't want to cause any trouble. It's I mean, no I trouble. Just, it's... We'd love to have you. Come on, Doc. What? You watch college football? Uh, I, no, I don't have a lot of time for Ooh, it. Big game tonight. What? Not your life. It's nice of you to invite Nathan. Oh, stop. <laughs> Just saying. There's nothing to it. He just seemed like he was alone. I'm thinking if we are nice to him, keep fixing up the house. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're just thinking of the neighborhood, we can be nice to someone on Christmas without it seeming like a setup. Come on, Daphne, you know me. Used to doing things on my own, and I like it that way. 
Well, we wouldn't want anybody to be alone on Christmas. Well, um, Linda certainly seems to have her opinions. Oh, that she does. <laughs> it's good, though. She has to help a lot of uncertain people make up their minds. Is she a counselor or something? Hmm, in a way, yeah. She's our event and wedding coordinator at the shop. What's her husband do? Oh, no, she's not married. Not that we haven't tried. You really want opinions? Get her talking about LSU versus Alabama. Woo! <laughs> Who's hungry? Mm, Lucas, hey. hurry up! Here you go. Good. Oh, we thank God for the food. If that's okay with you, Doc? Uh, of course. Okay. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings. We also thank you for our new friend, Nathan. We ask your blessings on the food that we are about to receive and also on those who made it. May we be mindful of those less fortunate tonight. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Okay. Mm. Mm. So, Dr. Davis, how do you know Mrs. Bell? We saw you hugging her after school. Olivia. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Bell is my sister. Oh, well, that's very nice. Did not know that. So, do you have any other family in town? Not just her. Well, the, the kids enjoyed um, your sister, Mrs. Bell's class this year, didn't you? She should give less homework, though. Well, as long as we're asking no one's questions. Nathan, how did you come to own the old Granville house? That's what we call it. I used to live there. My wife and I lived there, but then uh, she left, and then I did too. I, I would have expected that the old neighbors would have told you this. No, um, no one mentioned that, hmm. um, that I know of. Um, Daphne, did anyone ever mention that to you? Absolutely not, no. If anyone would know anything like that, it would be. Oh, you know, it's, you know, it's really nice of you to invite me over here, but I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, uh, I have a patient emergency. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to leave. Oh, uh, of course. It's a, a um, problem. It's nice meeting you. Uh, yeah. We understand, don't we? And uh, I'll walk you to the door. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. All right. Huh? Um. You know, the house hasn't looked that good in a long time, so thanks. Well, good. Yeah. Um, have a good night. Thanks. Well, not, um, mm -hmm. that's... That wasn't a patient emergency. Olivia. Touchy subject? Well, you know, I, I really don't think it's any of our business, so let's eat. I picked. He's a doctor. I thought girls liked that. Shh. Listen. Hi, Dr. Davis. Yeah, you know, it's really okay to call me Nathan. Oh, okay. Uh, can I get you something? 
Yeah, uh, Jeb told me that you had better gumbo here than at the deli by my office. Yeah, well, it's absolutely true, we do. Uh, look, I, I really, I really wanted to say that I'm sorry for leaving so abruptly last night. It, it was rude, I know. It's all right, you have patience, well, we understood. I didn't get a patient call. Uh, I, uh, I just don't let people into my life. And I was uncomfortable. Not because of any of you. I mean, you and your friends were all really nice. I'm just, I'm just used to doing things on my own. And I like it that way. Or at least I, I thought, you know, you all gave me a glimpse into what I've been missing, so. Well, what about your, your sister and her family? Well, you know, I, I, I see them, but, you know, it's, it's different. They, um, they, they have their own things to worry about. But, uh, look, I, I just really wanted to apologize to, to all of you. OK. Well, apology accepted. And uh, maybe you can try again some other time. I would like to. Thanks. A Friday. I'm sorry. Or we could, uh, we could, you know, try to do it again on Friday. Yeah. If, you know, if, if you're free, then I, I, I could pick you up. Uh, pick me up for what? Well, see, I, I don't want to invite myself over, but I don't cook, so we would have to go somewhere. Oh. 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 Um. Well, all of us? Uh, should I invite the Conrad? Maybe we could keep it small. I, I, I'm better one-on-one, -on -one, you usually. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I could do that. Great. Great. Um, I'll pick you up at 6. You can pick me up at 6. He really didn't want the gumbo. You're going, right? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> it's a date. No. No, that's not the way it seemed at the time. But I thought you were in favor of that anyway. Yeah, well, he's not who I had in mind, so. Well, I said yes, and I'm not backing out now. Maybe he'll get sick or something. Oh How did your oral report go today? You didn't tell me. Good. Yeah? Yeah, really good. Good. What'd you wish for? Snow. I wish that we have snow for Christmas this year. <laughs> <laughs> snow. <laughs> good thing you wished for the impossible. <laughs> Any other wishes come true today? I don't know. It was only Joey Becker's report today, and he wished for a million dollars. Oh, my goodness. I don't see an angel bringing that to him anytime soon, do you? Nah, and I don't think that was his real wish anyway. No? If you were Joey Becker, what would you wish for? For my dad to stop drinking. Um, I had no idea. I think that's why Joey Becker acts like such a jerk all the time. Well, that sounds like something for goodnight prayers, huh? Dear God, thanks for today and all the wishes that are coming true. Please help Joey's family. Please help us have a good night's sleep. Amen. Yeah, well, you never know. Dr. Davis might be a drunk, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Good night, baby. I love you. Love you, too. See you tomorrow. See ya. Mrs. Bell's class. Do you think it's a PE coach? I don't think so. All right, everybody circle up. I'm Mr. Brennan, and I usually sub over at the high school and the middle school, but Mrs. Bell had to leave unexpectedly, so I get the pleasure of revisiting the fifth grade for the next couple of days. Hey, wait a minute, not so fast. You don't even know me. I could be your worst nightmare, right? <laughs> is Mrs. Bell sick? Mrs. Bell is not sick, but she did have to leave, so for now, 
we're going to have some fun with geographic regions of North America. Yay. On Friday afternoon, she has us do oral reports. Well, Mrs. Bell wants to grade those herself, so some of you may have to wait until after Christmas. She's going to be gone until Christmas break? It's possible, but let's all hope that you're rid of me by then, because all the teaching and grading papers and stuff totally interferes with my college football watching schedule. All right, pilgrims, hit them up, move them out. So, Mr. Brennan had us label all the states, the capitals, and color which states were in the Big Ten, ACC, Pac-10. SEC? Of course. I was pretty good at it, though, thanks to you. They say that public education is in decline. He was so funny, Mom. He made all the spelling words into a game, and we were laughing so hard. You'd really like him. Am I too dressed up? I'm too dressed up, aren't I? Yeah, the shoes. The shoes? The shoes. You don't want to look like you're trying to impress him. Yeah, I shouldn't wear heels. I shouldn't wear heels. I should wear flats. Perfect. Yeah, not too impressive. Well, thank you. Do you have to go? Yes, honey, I do. But I told Lucas I'd be over at 6.30. Well, great. Have a great time. It is 6.30. Okay. I feel lecture about men coming. I'm too hungry. Well, I'm glad that we both agree now that Dr. Davis is not the man for you. I never said he was, honey. I think it's not really even a date. More for him, really. <laughs> There's one thing I was never going to do. My life was put you through a bunch of uh, failed dating relationships. Because we are just fine on our own. OK, I'll, I'll get that in a second. I'll Mom, put it. I, I, I really don't want jelly. It's, it's OK. until you answer the door. I know you're there because you never go anywhere else. I need some answers. I'm not going to leave until I get them. Lord of mercy, child, you're going to wake up the whole neighborhood. Can I come in? No. Well, can you come out? No. How else are we going to talk, then? I came here for privacy, not a conversation. Do you know where Dr. Davis is tonight? I know he visits you a lot because he owns this place. I need to know where he is. Come on. Come on, you don't want to sit in that dusty old room. Don't touch that, please. Sit down. So you only live in the back? How come you don't want people to know that you live here? That's my business. So, what is this about Dr. Davis? Well, how do you know him? We go back a ways. I knew his parents. Do you know where he is tonight? Nathan had some business that took him out of town. That's all I know. 
Are you a patient of his or something? Or something. I'm not an angel if that's what you're still worried about. No, ma'am. I think that seems pretty obvious. But you are collecting the wishes from the box. Well, if we left them in there, people would stop believing, wouldn't they? True. But then you'd have your privacy, and I, I thought that's what you wanted. You never saw any kid happier than Ricky Sanchez on that bike. But I just can't figure out how you got it to him. It was like magic. Expedite shipping. It's free for the holidays. What? Well, I may be an old lady, but I know how to use the internet and a credit card. Boy, do I know how to use that credit card. <laughs> how did you know where to send it? You and your friend were as loud as a herd of elephants along my fence. I heard you talking about the foster parents. I can put two and two together. Yes, ma'am. This has got to be our little secret. I don't want people thinking I'll give a gift to anyone who wants one. Of course not. What is your name, child? Olivia Mead. What's yours? Elsie Waybright. Did you need Nathan for some reason? Nothing medical. He was supposed to take my mom out to dinner tonight. But he stood her up. Oh, I'm sure he intended to call. Well, I'm sorry for bugging you. I just really wanted to know. You know, I do know a lot of people here. So in case you needed any help delivering things or finding out any information, I can help you sort the wishes out. Well, what makes you think I intend to deliver any more wishes? Well, if you didn't, you'd throw the wishes away. But instead, you have them all sorted out. I wouldn't tell anybody it was from you. Come back after dinner tomorrow and tell your mother where you're going. Because if she catches you out of the bed, there'll be no Christmas for you at all. Yes, ma'am. Good night. <laughs> Lifetime Achievement Award. Who yeah, was this? Um, June. Something really big must have happened for her not to go and get her award. Why would a famous person ever want to live here? Privacy. Miss Elsie? Hello? Miss Elsie, you should really take down those newspapers so you know it's me. These are the wishes from the angel box so far. I categorize them God, possible, stupid. Stupid? Look. Does it have to be so dark in here? I can't read them very well. Yes, it does. All right. I wish for a teacher who would never give us homework or tests. I wish I was bigger than Chris Higby so I could beat him up. It's not going to happen, even if it could. Dear Angel, Please give me a million dollars and a mansion with gold-plated toilets.
stupid. The middle basket we can separate as tasks, but I'm particularly interested in those who are not just asking for a present. But these require a little research. Can I look at those? I wish my dad could find a job and get sober. I know who that one is. I've been praying a lot on that one. You put mine in the God pile? It's not that hard. I'm sure we can do something about a lot of those. We're not going to take that poor, sad man to heaven. No, but we can make some of them come true. Baby, some things only God can do. Only God knows how to help. So let's just concentrate on this middle basket. My wish isn't that impossible. It's kind of weird that you're reading all the wishes. Do you understand the people's handwriting? Why? Did you put one in? That guy's everywhere. Except in my house on Friday night. Wait, no, don't, don't yell at him. Why would I? It's not him who I wanted to come anyway. Olivia? Are you hiding? Uh, we're just late for school. Oh. Uh, my, my sister was making baby blankets for the church. She asked me to drop them off for her. I'm glad you have time to keep your promises for others. Tell Mrs. Bell I hope she's feeling better. We have to figure out a way for them to meet. I'm sure we'll hit it off. Ask Mr. Brennan to come to the shop. But what if he comes while my mom's not working? Or your mom helps him instead of mine? There has to be a more certain way that they'll talk. I don't know, Olivia. You've been talking about this all day. Your romance isn't really my superpower, so I think I'm just gonna go play soccer. You can't play soccer, Lucas. That's my ball. No, it's the school's ball. And I ruled the school. Olivia! Whoa, 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 whoa. Break it up. That's enough. I guess you're gonna have to call my mom in and talk to her about this. I don't know if it requires that. I haven't been here very long, but I'm guessing that was a rare occurrence for you? Well, my mom likes to know things that's going on with me at school. And she likes to hear it firsthand. Well, I'm sure the principal would be glad to talk to her about it, if it comes to that. But it won't happen again, will it? Look, I know Joey's a problem and I'll keep my eye on him, but you let a teacher handle it, okay? All right, you can go now. Right. Okay. Oh, my mom works at King Cakes. Have you ever been there? King Cakes, yeah. You know, I think I've heard of it. You should come by and sometime and try gingerbread cookies we have for Christmas. It's delicious. Great bed pudding, too. All right. 
Thank you. <laughs> no, that was so obvious. I was just making suggestions and helping Christmas wishes come true. Yeah, your own. For my mom. I don't remember her wishing for that or him either. Well, you should wish for Joy Becker to stop picking on you. Maybe we got our days mixed up. No, I realized you didn't get my message. No, I did not. What message would that be? <laughs> you know, I guess I'm going to be constantly apologizing to you. I, um, I asked my office to, you know, leave word at your shop Friday. I had to take my sister to the children's hospital in Jackson. Olivia did mention that um, Mrs. Bell wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, would you like to come in? Yeah, sure. Um, well, so, um, is everything okay? I would not really, but there wasn't much more that I could do there, so she sent me back home to take care of a few things here. You said the children's hospital would... Uh, yeah, it's uh, my niece, Hannah. She needs a kidney. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, thanks. Well, uh, would you like to sit down? <laughs> oh, sure, thank you. Yeah? <clears throat> well, did she, did she get it? Did she... Uh, no, it wasn't a match. No, I'm sorry. But they want her to stick close, so, you know, she can be there quickly when they do find one. But that means that, you know, they, um, they have to find an apartment there. Okay, they must be very worried. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, you know, this isn't my specialty. But when you're in medicine, you know too much sometimes. Mm. Can I get you coffee or tea or...? Uh, sure, uh, tea, if you're offering. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. <clears throat> Um, excuse me, um, <sighs> you know, uh, the day that I came to your shop to tell you that I didn't get that patient call, I, um, I went back home to watch the LSU game. Did you? Yes. And, uh, you don't get a chance to watch that much football. Mm -hmm. But I was just wondering, you know, what you thought of the game. Here's a new one. Hannah Bell needs a kidney. How do you know that? My mom had a visitor tonight. There's this perfect place for eavesdropping. I knew that's where you'd put it. That's why we worded it. Mrs. Bell needs money so that she could live close to the children's hospital. What can we do? Well, I'm sure she needs more than I've got with all the Christmas wishes we've been granting. How do you have money to buy all these presents? Is that rude task? Well, there's nobody to buy for but myself and at my age. All the fun's gone out of that. Did you make it all from your singing? I know how to use the internet, too. Mm. Well, that was a long time ago. Well, yeah, but just this year you were supposed to sing a concert and get an award. How come you didn't go? You are a very nosy little girl. You're supposed to know things about your friends. Lucas, yeah, he's my best friend and we know everything about each other. Hmm. Uh, are we friends now? Partners at least, but I like friends. I like friends. 
friends too. <laughs> Come on, you want to see the source. Well, this is kind of a small area for a specialist to be practicing in, isn't it? Well, I don't know, your nose throat gets lots of business anywhere. Really? Yeah, there's a lot of ear-related symptoms and vertigo, some cancers, adenoid. Oh. Uh, oh. Tonsils, chronic sinusitis, all very exciting stuff as you can see. <laughs> but it's way more exciting than what planning parties. Oh, you think so? <laughs> oh, really? Well, this is kind of a small area to you know survive on planning weddings. We make baked goods for funerals. We don't discriminate. They need to eat as well. Not not our dearly departed, but <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it's not right. <laughs> uh, you're uh, much funnier. And you seemed the day that I met you with the caution tape. That was not particularly funny. Thank you. You're welcome. For the sense of humor part. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. I think that was a compliment. For you as well. <laughs> really? Me? Yeah. But I thought the tape was funny. You thought it was funny and that's mm -hmm. why you were putting it up? Well, afterwards. You know, I don't know what happened inside that old house. Well, you certainly don't have to tell me, but um, I'm awfully sorry that it did. I've been sorry about it for a long time, so maybe it was time I stopped. I want to get snow in with you. Yep. Um, Dr. Davis said that this was his house. It was. Whoa, what are these? Records, music. I've heard of them. <laughs> Miss Elsie, you were a diva. Pictures weren't half of it. Well, you look so beautiful. On the outside. Is this you? You were cute. No, that's my Malia. You have a daughter? Somewhere I do. You don't know where she is? She wants it that way. I wasn't always an angel, baby. I'm known for saying some very hateful words. I raised my hands a time or two. I drove away three husbands and a daughter. So you're trying to make up for all that? Well, when you get older, you realize your chances are passing you by, and you have to use the chances God gives you. Ms. Elsie? Are you dying? <laughs> We're all dying, baby. Some of us faster than others. But no, not the way you mean. Anything else? Not at the moment, but I'll probably think of some. <laughs> I'm sure you will. I've answered your questions. Will you answer my question? Where is your father, baby? And why would you ask for a husband for your mother and not a father for yourself? I don't need a father. My mom's told me that ever since I was born. She says I'm very self-sufficient. Well, sometimes we think we are, but it's never true. And don't be frightened by that either. One of my favorite verses says, my grace is sufficient for you because my power is made perfect in weakness. 
You see, when we admit that we're weak, that gives God a chance to show us that he is strong. Sounds like an excuse to do nothing. Well, we do the best we can, and then we've got to be humble enough to admit that we need him. And then we put things in the God basket. So why don't you try to keep in touch with Malia? That would take a miracle. There was a Christmas carol that she used to love when she was about your age. I put it on one of those records in there somewhere. Sing it. I don't sing. My voice is not what it used to be. Please? It came upon a midnight clear, the glorious song of old, with angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men, from heaven's all gracious king. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Elsie, you sure sing like an angel. You go on home to your mother. We have more wishes tomorrow. What about a fundraiser for Mrs. Bell? I'm no good at a bake sale. No, it's a benefit concert. You could sing. I don't sing anymore. But you just did. And it was beautiful. This is not about me. I can't be seen in the public anymore. Nobody knows who I am anymore anyway. Miss Elsie, they should. Good night. like your dad is doing with the Bayou Bengal beignets. Trying to get Les Miles to do a celebrity endorsement. That gets everyone excited. Why are you making fire if she said she wouldn't do it? I'm helping her catch the vision. She thinks that nobody remembers her, but maybe we could show her that people still love her. That way she won't be afraid to come out and sing. So you got the church's permission on Christmas Eve? They were already doing a Christmas program, so they're adding this. They wanted to do it. Lucas, why are you being such a Scrooge about this? Are you jealous or something? Jealous of what? Did you have a new best friend? Did you suddenly know what's best for everybody? If you haven't noticed, Olivia, none of it's working. It is working. Hey there, what can I do for you? Hey. I was just out jogging, and I remembered that this place has amazing gingerbread. We sure do. Best gingerbread in town. Hi, Mr. Bennett. This is my mom. Hey, kid. Yes, I'm her mom, Melinda. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So is this your place? No, no, uh, Lucas's parents, the Conroys, do. Uh, I'm the uh, catering coordinator. Ah, that's why your name sounded so familiar. You know, with all the craziness, it's hard to keep everything straight. Uh, what craziness would that be? Well, you're working with my fiance, Becca Holloway, on our wedding. Oh, my God. That's right. Yes, Becca. We know Becca. Sweet girl. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's into the food and the cakes and stuff. I just told her I want to go Tiger's Groom's Cake, but otherwise, I really don't care. Oh, well, you know, you really should, because she's having a hard time making decisions. Really? 
Huh, I didn't realize that. Well, why don't you give me two gingerbread cookies and I'll take one to her. Peace offering. Coming up, two gingerbread men. What a small world, isn't it? That he should, yeah. Huh? <laughs> That's funny. All right, here you go. That's three dollars. Keep the change. Thank you. Mrs. Mead, you have a terrific daughter. Oh, thank you. She's a real angel, isn't she? Thanks so much. See ya. All right, take care. He was nice, right? Positively engaging. Be right back, Mom. You're the guy. Right? The reporter that everybody's been asking to write about the bangle beignets? Every time I come here. Look, I already told them, beignets aren't a story. So a coach likes to eat donuts. It's a short notice. I'm still confirming talent. But I thought you could help get the word out. You got Elsa Way coming to perform your benefit concert on Christmas Eve? She's been to MIA since last summer. She lives here now, in the old wishing house on my street. It's true. Thanks anyway, kid. Don't ask me about the beignets again, all right? This way? Are you all right in there? Hello? All right, I'm coming in. Hey! Wait! This way? to check out your story. Not about this. It's none of your business. Did you see the glass? It was broken. Maybe she's hurt. She's not hurt. Miss Elsie! Miss Elsie, wake up, please. Close that back, child. Who are you? Chasing that little girl. Nobody invited Miss, you here. Miss Way up here. Out. An entertainment out, columnist for the Daily out, Star. Out right now. Are you the one answering all the angel wishes? You did this? You brought a reporter into my house when I trusted you? No. I you told him. I didn't bring him. I, I didn't know he was going to come here. I just wanted you to know how much people remember you. Well, you go out with him. You go out right now. No, Ms. Elsie. Go. Go now. Please. Go right now. Hey, 
Hey, Bill. You remember when you said it'd give me a shot at that city desk over there if I found the next big story to break? I got it. Yeah. First of all, she's not dying. I didn't say that. Let him finish, please. I asked her permission to tell you what's going on with her so you can fully understand what you did. She has throat cancer. Now, I helped research and develop a new blue light system, a PDT, a while back, and we're using it to treat her. What is that? Oh, it was photodynamic therapy. Photosensitive drugs are absorbed by cancer cells, and then a special light kills them. The blue light? Yes, but it makes her sensitive to regular light for a few weeks. That explains why she was always in the dark. When you pull open the curtains, you put her at risk. Is she OK? We're doing some tests, but it seems so. Now, whether she's emotionally OK is another thing. I just wanted her to sing for Mrs. Bell. She sings so beautifully. You heard Elsie sing? Well, how did she sound? Maybe a little raspy at first, but I thought it was because she was singing a song that she sang for Malia. Well, listen, there is going to be some form of punishment to start with. All right, young lady? Isn't there something I can do to say sorry to her? Maybe we can get her and her daughter together for Christmas. Sweetheart, you overstepping into people's personal lives is exactly what got you into this trouble in the first place. You're lucky it was Miss Elsie. Going into a stranger's house at night without telling your mother. <clears throat> Why don't you go on upstairs? I'll be up in a minute so we can discuss consequences. Go. Sorry if I overstepped anything myself. Stop. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm leaving. No, stop. <laughs> apologizing. I should be the one apologizing. It was deserved. I, I, I should have known what Olivia was doing. I should have known about Elsie. She's a kid. She's going to hide things. It's... I have tried to teach her that she is smart, well, that she's capable, that she's self-sufficient, that she doesn't need anybody, because I've never I've never wanted her to be embarrassed or, or, or feel lacking because she only has me and she doesn't have me. I am so sorry. I, I have no idea why I just did that. Well, well, you know, I know why I did it, but it was, it was completely inappropriate. I'm sorry. Uh, Maybe just next time, give, give me some warning, I'll be better prepared. <laughs> OK. Next time. <laughs> Don't be so hard on Olivia. I mean, she did get Elsie to sing, and she hasn't done that in a long time. Good night. Yeah, good night. <laughs> okay. about my punishment? I'm still thinking about that, honey. Why didn't you tell me about Elsie? I just didn't want you to tell me to stop. Mom, I ruined everything. Miss Elsie's angry now and she's She's never going to come out of the house, and the wishes are over. 
Lucas isn't speaking to me now. Lucas will come around, I'm sure. I even wish for you to have a husband. <laughs> but I messed up that too. And so Elsie said that some wishes were for the God basket and that we were to weaken. Those were the times that God had to be strong. But I tried to do them anyway. I'm so sorry, Mom. I know you are, baby. I know you are. I, sh I should try to fix it. Olivia, honey. The right way. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that anybody else was in here. What do you have there? Um, all the Christmas wishes I can remember from the God basket. Elsie wanted me to pray for them. Which I never really did at first. May I? Hmm. Did she wish for this one about finding Malia? I added that. But I'm not overstepping. I figured I can ask God anything. And he can always say no if he wants to. Well, well I'm here figuring the same thing. I'm sorry, Dr. David. Elsie's gonna be okay. She's a strong lady. And I'm sorry that I said bad things to my mom about you. And I prayed against you too. Why would you do that? I had somebody else in mind. And I thought you hated kids. But, but then I saw the nursery in your house and I thought it was really, really sweet. We had really wanted a baby, but uh, I can't have children. Why didn't you just adopt? Well, my ex-wife wanted her own children. More than she wanted me, apparently. She married someone else? Mm hmm. They have three kids now. I'm gonna put kids for you on the list. If you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's a tall order. It's definitely for the God basket. <laughs> you know what, maybe I should start with a wife. You know, before the kids, I'd rather do it in that order. You know, some wives already come with kids. Mm. It's kind of like a prepackaged deal. Yes, it is. Not all of them are perfect, though. No, neither am I. Well, I better get to it. <laughs> Olivia, the pastor's gonna have a special offering on Christmas Eve for Hannah. Maybe you can encourage people to come. It really meant a lot to my sister when I told her what you were planning. I can get a lot of people to come there. Yeah? And then me not on my own. With an adult's help. Okay. You could still come, you know. You wouldn't have to sing. It'll be dark enough. And I think the press interest has died down, being that it's Christmas Eve. When I decided to move here, you promised me absolute privacy. 
Well, that was before you decided to buy a foster kid a very expensive bike. Elsie, whoever you were before, you're not that person anymore. You don't have to punish yourself or try to be strong all on your own. Did Olivia send you up here to tell me that? <laughs> no. No, but thanks to the both of you, a lot of people have gotten a second chance for Christmas this year. Including me. <laughs> Thank you. Ready? Everything. You were too. Look at all the people that showed up for Mrs. Bell. We didn't need Elsie tonight. We had our own angel. That was an absolutely beautiful night. And uh, thank you so much for helping Olivia out as much as you did. She deserves most of the thanks. <laughs> well, um, I know a little girl who's waiting for this, so have a good night. You too. Bye. Olivia, Dr. Davis doesn't have any family in town tomorrow morning. Just, just go, Mom. Go. <laughs> Uh, Nathan, just... <laughs> Good night. So is he coming? Yes, he is coming. <laughs> and I think that Miss Elsie is going to be just fine. Let's go inside. It's Christmas Eve. Whose forms are bending low Who toil along the climbing way With painful steps and slow Come swiftly off the wings, oh red, to hear the angels sing.
coming through. Oh, dude, that's super that's super cool. Cool. I can't yeah. believe it. Oh, one more, one more. Oh, sorry. Here. Oh, <laughs> you believe the snow? I know, it's amazing, huh? Uh, hi. Hi. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. You're welcome. And Merry Christmas to you. The pastor told me that that was the best offering they've ever had. Thank you. So, where is everyone? Oh, there they are. It smells good. I thought we were all here. I didn't mean to interrupt your Christmas. Oh, I'm so sorry, Miss Elsie. Please forgive me. Well, it was a moment of weakness, but God made it strong. This is my daughter, Malia. Hi. Merry Christmas. Hi. Merry Christmas. Come on in. We have more food than we need. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.